FutureCam has two main types of feature recognition, AFR, which is automatic feature recognition, and IFR, interactive feature recognition. Now often better results can be achieved by using the IFR method. In this example, we're going to highlight where IFR may be beneficial to the user. So the first thing I'm going to do is automatically recognize features by going to the Steps tab and selecting AFR. I'm going to show my options that I have selected prior to doing the AFR. So we can see I've chosen to create face features, whole patterns, and I've selected bottom radius suppression. Additionally, I've unchecked to create a 3D feature and unchecked the use edge based feature recognition. So I'm going to skip to next. The setup that's been recognized is setup one. And again, I'm going to select next and feature cam is going to analyze the model down the Z axis, finding all of the features possible. In this case, we can see a face feature, 80 different hole features, and side one and two. At this stage, I'm going to choose finish, view the various features within the part view, so I can see my face in operation. Side one has been created to machine the boss shape at the top of my solid. We have pattern one, which is a pattern of the holes on the top flange. Side two dictates the overall shape of my solid model. And we have pattern two, which are the holes in the middle flange area. And pattern three, are the holes at the bottom. Now let's run through a 3D simulation and have a look at the results that we achieve. As we can see, we have a face in operation, we have our boss being machined, we have some spot drilling, and then we have our main drilling. Now straight away we can see areas highlighted in pink, which indicate possible gouges or collisions. So if we have a look down the z-axis, we can see a variety of sections which indicate possible collisions or gouges of the part. Now the main reason for this is that during the automatic feature recognition, the holes that have been created are disjointed due to the undercut regions. So instead of having holes for the top face, which machine through the entire solid model, we have separate hole features. Now in this case, we know we can machine 20 holes as opposed to 80. So I'm going to delete the holes created from automatic feature recognition. I'm going to select by doing a shift select, holding control and selecting pattern one and simply choose delete. Now this deletes the pattern of holes, but I'm also required to delete the original holes created. I'm now going to use the interactive feature recognition method in order to re-recognize my hole features. So I'm going to come to a new feature wizard. I'm going to choose a hole from dimensions, and I'm also going to select to extract with feature recognition. And this switches on my interactive feature recognition capabilities. As I select next, we have a variety of options. And the important option in this instance is to choose to merge disjoint holes. So in this case, as I select next, all holes will be merged together. So I get my 20 hole features as I wish. I can simply select all of these and choose to finish. If I now rerun my 3D simulation, we have a much better result with no collisions or gouges on the part. Now, before we continue, I can see the chamfer on the top of this boss has not yet been machined. 
and I can simply add this by going into the strategy tab for side one. As we can see, I have a field which dictates chamfer size. And to determine my chamfer size, I can simply select the hyperlink and choose the bottom and top of my chamfer. We can see that's been added in, as have the according operations. And I can now re-simulate and view my results. And in this case, we can see the chamfer has been incorporated into the machining process. So what I now wish to do is machine the undercut regions as shown by my selection on screen. Now we can machine these areas by using a groove feature and the type of tool that I wish to use is a slot mill or a side mill which is what it's called within feature cam. So what I'm going to do to make my selection process slightly easier is hide all, so hide everything on my screen and I'm then going to show my solid model. I'm then going to select the surfaces that make up the top of my undercut region. Just going around the model, holding shift and making the selection. So once I've done that, what I'm required to do is create a curve of the top edge prior to creating my groove feature. So I'm going to hold Control and K, which is going to blank the unselected surfaces. So I'm left with only what was selected on screen. I'm then going to go to my curve wizard and I'm going to choose to create a curve from a surface using the surface edges method. Now for this particular curve, I wish to connect the start and end point and I'm going to select the edge that I wish using my interactive selection method and I'm going to specify to select the entire top edge by double clicking like so. All of the faces have been added into my wizard and I can simply finish. If I look under my curve tab, I can see curve 14 that's been created. So with this selected, I can now come to my new feature wizard. I can choose to create a groove from a curve. Notice our feature recognition method grays out, so it's not an option in this case. And then say next, curve 14 is being automatically added into the wizard. So I can say next. If I take a view from the front, we can see I'm required to offset the Z location of my feature, and this is going to be by half of the height of my surface. So the height of my surface is five millimeters, so I'm going to offset by minus 2.5 millimeters, preview, checking that the grooving feature is in the correct location. I can say next. And the depth in this case is being used to avoid the flanges above and below my undercut region. I can then say next. Ensure I'm machining on the correct side. And I can choose the strategy that I wish to apply to this feature. Again, I'm going to say next. We then can see some slit saws have been selected as the tool type. If I say next again, I'll have more details about the particular tool. So in this case, I can see it has a diameter of 315 millimeters with a cutter width of five millimeters. So I'm going to accept the default choice in tool and say finish. I'm then going to preview my groove feature. I'm going to use Alt F3 to step the tool around my feature. And we can see the tool path like so. So if we're happy with the feature, which in this case I am, what I'm going to do is show all. And what we need to do 
is make a transformation of the grooving feature down in the z-axis in order to cut the second and third undercut regions. So with my groove selected, I'm going to go to Edit, Transform. And I'm going to choose to translate this in Z by a distance of minus 15 millimeters. I'm going to choose to copy two features. By selecting Preview, I can see the features outlined in blue. That looks good, so I can choose OK. And there I have my subsequent grooving operations. Now, if I wish to make any changes to my grooving operations, I can simply go to the feature that I wish to make changes, in this case, Groove 1. And I'm going to go to my strategy page and uncheck roughing. So I just have a finishing pass. I'm also going to change the tool. So we can see we're using a side mill. The width is going to be five millimeters. And I'm going to, in this case, choose a slightly smaller tool. So here we have a diameter of 100 millimeters, which is more fitting for this part. So I'm going to select that and say apply. And I'm also going to make an adjustment to the feeds and speeds used. So I've increased my feeds and speeds slightly and said apply and OK. Now instead of repeating the process of going into the particular feature and making changes to the strategy, feeds and speeds and tooling, I simply want to copy the attributes of Groove 1 into my subsequent grooving features. And I can do this by selecting Groove 1, going to Edit and choosing Copy. And this copies the feature parameters. I can then go to Paste Special, which allows an option of copying machining attributes from one feature to another. So I'm going to select this and choose Next. We can then see I'm able to copy feeds and speeds, tooling overrides, and machining attributes. So I then have to make a selection to the features I wish to copy to. So I'm going to choose Groove 1 underscore 1 and underscore 2 and simply say Apply and Finish. If I come into either of these features, we can then see the new tool that's been selected according to the selection I made for Groove 1 and the updated feeds and speeds along with the strategy update, in this case removing the roughing operation. So I can now run my 3D simulation and view the finished profile of my solid model.